In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the previous periods in DAX. So previous day, previous month, quarter and year. I'm gonna show you step by step on how you could write these functions and also we're gonna be talking about some scenarios of when you would realistically use this in the real world. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So in this video I want to build on top of the HR Analytics dashboard that we created during our live stream. So let me show you. So this is the report that we created during the live stream itself. It's just a simple HR analytics dashboard that has some pages specifically to do with specific parts of our HR. Um, so we have the kind of the summary page here with some details and we have some specific pages with headcount, starters, levers and turnover. And you can see here we created a page background for this to remove the need for creating these shapes to organize our visuals in a page. If you're interested in how to do that, I have a video covering it, so check it out if you haven't yet. And what I want you to focus on is the historical trend uh, ribbon chart at the bottom here that shows how the headcount it has transformed for the past couple of years. So we can see that from 2017, for example, to 2018, it has evolved from 121 to 139 full-time employees. So it's the blue line right here. And if you hover over the middle of it, it shows us the headcount change. So how much this um, value has changed over time between these two years. And if you see that if I show this historical trend as a table, and you can do that from here, you will get these numbers for every year, but you can't find where this headcount um, change is between different years. And that's what we're gonna try to find out in today's video. So to start with, let's go back to the report um, and let's create a new page here. So now let's start by using the previous period in our measures, right? So let's say, for example, we have the years and the headcount. Let's put them on a table here. Let's not summarize the years. So we can get the, the, the head count per year that we have. And let's hide the blank years. All right, so let's hide the total as well. So now what we want to try to do is get the previous head count for, um, for the years. And let's see how we can write that using DAX. So let's create a new measure. Let's select previous period as the name. And then let's type previous year because that's what we want to get, right? So hit tab. So it says here that it returns table, which means that this function is a tabular function. So it means that we need to have a scalar function to kind of house the result from this function. So what we'll do is we will put it in a calculate and in calculate we want to put the expression first. So what we want to do is we want to do the head count. You see that misspelling here. And what we want to use here as the filter is actually the, uh, the previous period that we wanted to use. So let's do previous year and let's put the date there. So just to recap, what this does is it counts the head count, but it uses the previous year as its filter context. Now let's see how this differs compared to the normal head count calculation. We hit enter and let's bring that new measure that we created into our table. So now you'll see that for every year context, you'll see that it gives us a different value from the current year headcount. It actually gives us the previous year's headcount, which is exactly what we wanted. So for example, for three, for 2021, you can see that it's showing us 36. And that's because there is 366 people in 2020 at that time. Now, what's interesting about this is that, for example, if we want to add a month 
in this context you'll see that you will get different headcounts for every part of the month but this previous period is only showing the previous year so you'll see that although we have different values in 2021 um, you will have the previous period is only always showing the headcount for the previous year so you'll see that on December 2020 you have 366 but for the whole of 2021 it's only calculating or it's only getting the value based on that last year number so 366 so let's see how we can write the previous month and actually it's not too different from how we have here so what we'll do is we'll just copy it and we'll create a new measure we'll do a previous month And instead of previous year, we will put previous month here. And it asks for the same thing really. So we can just use the same, same one. And if I put it in our table here, so now you'll see it's a little bit different, right? From the previous year. Let me just rename that so we can so it's not too difficult to understand what it does. It's a previous year. So you see that it now calculates or rather it checks what the previous month is and then it gives you that value. So you'll see here, for example, if we look at February 2021, you'll see that it's showing us 347 because that was the previous month. For January 2021, it's showing us 366 because that was the previous month's value and you can use this exact same syntax for previous quarter and previous day so it pretty much works the same same way so if we do well actually we've already copied it let's create a new measure for previous quarter and we will do here previous quarter Let's add it in our table and then let's do also previous day. Let's add it into our table as well. So it probably doesn't make much sense if we have them all in the kind of month granularity. So maybe if I can put them in different contexts so you understand exactly what I'm trying to do here. So let's delete this one and let's try to see about the previous day. So we'll do the date here and we will put the head count and day. So you see it works exactly like how the previous year worked except now we're looking at it on a date level so you will see it shows us the value of the headcount for the previous day and so on and so forth so now that you know how you can create your previous period calculations in dax let's talk about how and when you would be using this and this actually loops back to the ribbon chart that i showed you at the beginning of this video so if we go back to the headcount you'll see that the only way for us to calculate this ribbon change for every year dynamically in DAX is by doing a division between the current value of headcount against the previous year's value. And that's how we're able to get the headcount change. So let's see if we can get this 18% change between the 2017-2018 for full-time employees. Um, so let's see if we can match that number first. So 121 in 2017 and 139 in 2018. So if we go back to our new page here, let's create a new table. The so year, headcount, and we already have the previous year here. All right, so let's put them in a table. Again, don't summarize. And because we have some blanks here we'll just hide the blanks and actually because we want to just look at the full-time employees we want to filter the employment type as well so we're just interested in full-time employees so what what are we interested in we're interested in 2017 to 2018 
um, headcount change so it would be this specific one now it doesn't really match what we have in our headcount so let's see what what the problem is so if I click on the chart here you can see that I actually filter it by top five function so which is wrong so let's just delete that now it think it matches now so 282 and 2313 which gives us a 11% headcount change between these two so yeah so you see that it matches now so what we want to try to do is we want to do the DAX calculation between these two um, calculations that we have here so let's create a new measure here and let's name this measure um, divide percent change and then we'll do simply actually we want to do a divide and we want the numerator to be previous year and then head count so that divides the previous year that we have 282 and then the head count which is 313 let's see what that gives us it might have been the other way around yeah, it's definitely the other way around. So let's do a head count and the previous year. And we'll put zero there as an alternative result. And actually there's still something a little bit weird here. It's showing us one, which is 1.11, which is not exactly right. So we'll do minus one. I think that's what will give us the correct number. We'll change that to a percentage and you see that now gives us the right percentage change that we expect that is the same in the ribbon so it shows us how the headcount has changed from the previous year to the current year maybe it's a lot less confusing if I put previous year first so you can see that there's been a 76.25 percent increase in the headcount from 2016 to 2017 and 11% from the 2017 to 2018 headcount and let's let's just verify that quickly just so that we are fully sure that that's exactly what's happening so 2018 2019 there was a minus 10.54% change see that So, well, I already forgot what we looked at. So 10.54 in 2019. So that is exactly what we have there in the headcount change. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now understand how you can use the previous periods for your calculations in DAX. Leave this video a like if it helped you in any way. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that are included in the description box below. And thank you so much guys for watching. See you again on the next one.